extracurricular activities. Uh, Chairman Wright, board members, this ties right into what I was, uh, uh, I was just mentioning. Uh, instructionally, extracurricularly, uh, I think these uh, activities for our students are, are key to some of them uh, to keep them motivated. Uh, I do think it's, it's a better, makes a better, better well-rounded student uh, if they're allowed to participate in some of these activities. Uh, I do ask that when we take action on this tonight that we do go ahead and break away from the quote-unquote agreement that we had before and we base our <coughs> ability to participate and play uh, on what CDC guidance has, has given us and community transmission, uh, school impact, overall well-being of the students, and ability to do health mitigation strategies. Uh, those five key areas uh, are what we should look at on a weekly basis to make sure uh, if there's uh, an outbreak in school, obviously that is going to change some of the extracurricular activities. Uh, I don't think anybody has any objection to that. Uh, you know, it, it's not rocket science on that part. Uh, if our community transmission starts going up high again, uh, I think you know that obviously is going to be uh, play a key factor in whether it impacts the school and whether we start losing learners uh, instructionally uh, in person. So uh, that would be my recommendation to the board is is to allow participation back uh, into athletics uh, given all those factors and the latest CDC guidance. Thank you Mr. Callahan and what he's referencing is the operational strategy for K-12 through phase mitigation that the CDC published on February the 12th and it's a it's a great plan that they did that takes in um, numbers of community transmission there's two data points that takes in place and we're down almost 30 percent um, just in the past seven days and much more than that in the last three to four weeks which is amazing this takes the guesswork out of it takes it from it feeling like it's a personal decision and it uses a scientific data-based approach into what we're doing and i think it's a solid plan and it, it would allow our students back to play again which is what we all want based on this cdc um, plan for operational strategy as for the other agreement, I'll say, Sherman, I think you're right. We exited that agreement a long time ago, regardless of what our vote was. Mm -hmm. If we were still in that agreement, we wouldn't have been practicing at the level we were four weeks ago. Correct. So we let our students go above and beyond that, that agreement during our highest peak. So I think that agreement's been <laughs> long, null, and void. But I appreciate your leadership. I appreciate everything you've done. I appreciate your support. Um, of the board and answering us day or night regarding this um, you've you've went above and beyond any of our expectations as well as the all, all the other staff as well as Ms. Hansen and Mr. Brown and what they led in that solid presentation and it very much was but what we've long been awaiting for was published February 12th and it takes it out of anybody's decision and leaves it in the hands of the CDC so thank you Mr. Callahan I'm in full support Ms. Morgan was that a motion that was a motion Second. <laughs> I make a motion we approve um, the CDC guidance for to use her for return to play. A motion by Ms. Morgan. Was that second by Mr. Shaw? I believe second that. All right. Roll call, Ms. Bess. Mr. Franson. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Kern. Yes. Mr. Littleton. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. Mr. Shaw. Yes. Mr. Wright. Yes. I'm Debbie Fleshman. I'm a nurse practitioner at Alliance Express Urgent Care in Covington. We are currently available to test anybody with symptoms of fever, fatigue, cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, or any symptoms that are concerning for COVID-19, flu, or strep. 